Hello, baby. Do you know me? Have you met me before? Do you want to stay with me a little longer? What do you want to do with me? Why do you talk to me like that? Don't look at me with this kind of eye. My God, what are you talking? You look very really funny. <laughs> Well, I had for a while a Roger. Finally, I actually sold it because I wanted to get another one, but I couldn't find the right violin. So I was for a while without sort of violin, between violins. Uh, there was a couple whom I knew less well from Buffalo. Well, they said, Ivory, if you can read down your hotel tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock or something, we'll go to Wurlitzer and I'll help you to get the violin. You know? <laughs> I didn't think, I nearly fell off my feet. <laughs> But the thing is, we went to Wurlitzer, and that was the only violin that was available, in a way. The, you know. And I was leaving for, Paris, for Europe the next day. So it was a question of either this or, or not. And, uh, and that in itself was a de could be a deterrent, because I don't like to be forced into a situation. So either you take that or not. You know. But there that, that it was. So my relation to it, to this particular instrument, was a little, uh, uh, you know, it's a little I mean, as if it's you were forced into a marriage. It it's either dead girl or not. A, a male order bride without what? much choice. It was sort of a forced yeah, marriage in a, arranged. Well, in a way, kind of thing. And the, the very fact of it was a kind of a, yeah, but there, there it was. Well, I, I, and I left the next day with my bride, who <laughs> were, um, <laughs> <Your bride. laughs> Maybe my reaction was at first, uh, yeah, but what, uh, you know, and it took me uh, uh, quite a while. Mm. But maybe that was the good thing about it. Because it was not as one of those things where you go, you fall in love. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, but it was something which grew. Mm. And it took me about a year, year and a half, really, until I and it, or he, she, he. or she, or whoever, uh, became, said, OK, uh, you re OK. You could say, well, uh, uh, but actually, the longest marriage of my life is certainly this one. <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, and I think we've been more or less uh, fairly faithful to each other. You know, I love this uh, uh, joke, maybe I already told you, you know, this kind of anecdote like that. What instrument do you play? Oh, well, that's, I play a study violin. Oh, well, that explains everything. That's, you know. That has happened to me to all the people of the same all as I say, well, no. On the other hand, so the violin does not change. People, some people think if I had a violin like that, would I play better? Not at all. It's, a, it's much more difficult to play on a instrument like that than just on a simple instrument. You know that very well, obviously. Because it, it has much, so many more possibilities. If you don't use them, then the violin has a way of taking revenge upon you. Because you have me, and you don't know what to do with me, it's like, uh, well, all right, I mean, uh, why do you ask me this question? Mm, I think it's interesting how you adapt to um, the way you play, but also how you project onto your playing, knowing what you're playing. Meaning, well, sometimes I think people think their, their wrong notes sound better on a good violin. I see, I see. I never heard that, that's not bad. Oh, David. And Oistrach, and Milstein, what God, that <laughs> Normandy boy. <laughs> For God's sake, what a funny picture. Uh, David, uh, you know, I remember once, hmm, I made a little party for him. It was in Paris, actually. And, um, and we used to stay till about two or three in the morning, and at three in the morning, I drove him back to his hotel. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and as we were driving, he said to me, can you let me drive a little, you know? <laughs> so I said, yeah, of course. And, and like a child, he, did, he started to drive. And the, <laughs> like a, and pardon, pardon, like a, he, he made the class. Yes, he made them. <laughs> it was very funny. I'd say no one. <laughs> David Oysa. And Isaac, you see, it was like, they were like my home in New York when I came first. I was uh, all the time. What's your impression of 
modern careers today, young people that are making a career as a soloist, what would you tell them to do maybe differently? Forget themselves. Forget themselves. <laughs> maybe. Oh, how? As yeah, a, what does that mean? By allowing the music to take them away. Not to be so concerned with uh, to to I mean a beautiful mistake can be wonderful here. Yeah. It's what I you mean, remember, it's what you think yeah. of. I mean that I makes you human. Uh, actually it was I think Bernard Shaw who mm -hmm. wrote to was it to Heifetz asking, please would you want to play one note out of <laughs> so that I know that you are human. human. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that but it's not that only. It's, I mean, for example, I, uh, I loved Chrysler. I mean, uh, and some of the recordings and things like that. There was one piece, I, I can never remember who was uh, the Chopin. And then he does that note, which is completely out of the, uh, you know. And it's in the record because it couldn't be cut at that time. So it's really, but this, wrong note is so beautiful, you know, <laughs> that you can't, I can't imagine this piece otherwise, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that uh, somehow now there is what I would call the, a new, new generation of young artists okay. who are beginning to say to hell with everything okay. I play. Okay. And, okay. you know, and that's, I think, good. Okay. Because, um, um, my poor mother, if she was alive, she would probably say it to me again, but she used to say, cite a kind of a Russian uh, dicton or whatever, not a proverb, but a risk благородне делай. I don't know exactly what it means. You speak Russian? No. He says risk is a good, uh, I don't know, business or a Motivator good thing. Uh, or? It's a good thing, kind okay. of thing. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, if you don't take, it's not, you shouldn't take risk for the, for the, for the, Thing for the, uh, how do you say, the purpose of taking risks, why the whole thing is a risk anyway. There is a certain way of playing, mm -hmm. unfortunately, which is slightly um, establishes itself by necessity, a kind of a jet lag way of playing. <laughs> Describe oh. the jet lag playing, how, yeah, how, yeah. how is that? Well, it means that you don't play too much like this or too much like that, you play more or less like that, so you can, you know, for example, I love when people talk about an artist or Oh, he's very reliable. Now, he's terrible, you know. Some conductors or, or orchestra manager, you know, they like people who are reliable. Reliable. I mean, it's so, you know, when we look at a picture like that, and you have those guys who are, oh, he's Jack's probably 45, Stern is 43, Nostein is how old? But they're, they're, they're in the, the, those guys in that picture are at the top of their career. Mm. And they're friends, they're people, yes. they're real people. Yes. They're not these they're not these no. frozen icons they're not that we sometimes people. Not all, turn no. them into. No, they you you just said you answered the question which I you never yeah. yes. They were friends. I I, I, I remember reading about uh, Isai, mm -hmm. uh, his life story so in the summer he would spend his summer somewhere in a spa, I don't know something. Mm -hmm. And all these friends would come and play champion all of that. I mean, I don't see that very often. I mean, in fact, I don't see that at all like this, so, really. You know, a, a, Everybody's so concerned with their career. What does it mean? An amateur once, an amateur musician who played quartets every Sunday once told me that for him, I asked him, why are you, have you been playing music for 60 years? What, mm. What's so interesting? And he said, music for me is friendship. It brings me together with mm. my friends. Mm. And that, I mean, every level of music is always there, isn't it? Mm. It, well, I don't ask you who it was, but I mean, they say that uh, Chrysler said mm. that when he comes on stage, he said, I'm going out on the stage to meet my friends. <laughs> it's really, it's really, it's really wonderful. And he really came, I mean, I, I, I realize now that, that you know, that, that when I, I, that I heard him, he had loved them, too. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, you know, and, and many in Kazal, so no, you know, and um, they really came out, uh, they didn't come out to show something. They came out really to meet their friends. And they played like that. And they played false notes. Yeah, of course. And they were wonderful. They were mistakes. They, they were not mistakes. So, well, what? You're not a machine. So sometimes you think it might be just not quite that. So why? You see, and they often was reproaching Heifetz that everything was perfect. 
But it was perfect in the sense that he, he was always going on. He was always on the edge of an abyss. Will you miss me? <laughs> I won't be there to miss you when you miss me. That's the whole difference. You might miss me, maybe, but you wouldn't know about it. And I wouldn't be there to miss you because I wouldn't be there. Now, who is going to remind you of me? Now, I'd be such a negativist and think about me. Think, let's say, talk about you. Do you like me? <laughs> <laughs>